When the relay is energized, it opens the one that was normally closed and closes the one that was normally open. So when it's de-energized, what happens? If the blower relay isn't kicked in because we don't have a G-call, high voltage heat strips come on, these close, we have current flowing through here. Well, now it has a path to the blower. It's going to bring the blower on, and that's going to be carried by these heat strip contactors or sequencer or whatever you have that's actually rated for high, high enough amperage to do the job. So this is safe. If this blower relay kicks in, so if we get a G call, it's fine. Same thing will happen. This will now go from normally closed to normally open. So this is if it's energized, it'll switch positions. And now this will go closed, it'll bring the blower on, but it won't backfeed the heat strips, it won't allow it to uh, work improperly. And so that's all just a function of taking this relay and turning it upside down and thinking of it differently and not just working from left to right. Once you start to think in that way, not just having to use it in the way that you're used to using it, now all of a sudden you can use that relay in the opposite way and connect the common side, what we call common or terminal one, to the load rather than the power supply and it gives us the ability to create this unique interlock. So this is a common problem when people are working on fan coils or air handlers. It's a actually fairly common mistake and it happens with the best of intentions by technicians who think they understand relays and probably do, but just make silly mistakes. So basic principle, when heat strips run, electric heat runs, we want the blower to run as well. Similar to the way that a integrated circuit board does on a gas furnace where when you get a W call, so white low voltage, it brings on the gas and then the integrated circuit board brings on the blower. Well, with heat strips, whenever the heat strips are on, you want the blower to be on, but it's the G call, the G terminal from the thermostat that controls the blower. So just in case you don't have a G call from the thermostat and you still have a W or W2 call bringing on your heat strips, you want that blower to come on. And so this is a common thing. If you look at this diagram from Carrier, this is an example of a system like this. And you have a blower relay, which is very similar to this blower relay right here that's got normally closed and normally open contacts and you need to what we call interlock this so that way the blower will come on when the heat strips are on but we cannot have the blower relay bringing on the heat strips because it's not rated for that current nothing in that blower relay can bring on the heat strips and we don't want it to accidentally bring on the heat strips when the blower's on for any reason. No matter what we do, we only want this to work one direction, not the other, and that's where it gets tricky. And so let's show some of the basic components that are used when you're working with uh, heat strips, blowers. Um, you're not gonna see these commonly in gas furnaces. This is mostly a fan coil air handler thing, but there may be some applications where you see relays in other electrical situations. It's good to understand them even if you don't work on many of these types of systems. So let's start over here. This is a 93. 70 relay. It's a very simple relay. If you look on the side, it'll give you a lot of information about it. We've got a 24 volt coil. You can see 9370. That's listed there. And then it actually shows what every terminal does over here on this side. And so you can actually see here the, the coil is our contacts one and three, which makes sense. They're kind of down here by themselves. So if you were going to use this as a blower relay, you would connect your green, which is your 24 volt blower call to one side, generally one, because that's sort of the way we like to think of it, reading from left to right, and then your common to terminal number three. But it wouldn't matter which way you did it. Polarity doesn't matter here. And then we have two, four, five and six but you can see six is just a dummy it doesn't actually do anything so if we look on this right here you can see that four and six are actually tied together so four and six are now the same thing so four is tied to six just for the purpose of making the internal connections on the relay and our normally closed contacts are between five and four and our normally open contacts are between two and four on this relay that's a very simple, very inexpensive relay. When you go to the next relay up, this is actually a double pull, double throw relay. And so you actually have double throws where it can go normally open, normally closed, but it, then it has two sets of them. We have our coil down here in the bottom, which is quite evident on the 9340. So this is where we would connect if this was being used as a blower relay. And by the way, with what we're talking about today, blowers and heat strips, you could not use this for your heat strips because it's only rated at 15 amps. This one here is rated at 13.8 full load amps so you could not use that 
So these relays are generally rated for only 15 amps, and depending on the exact application, that's about what they're gonna do for you. And so you can't use these for heat strips. A five kilowatt heat strip at 240 volts draws right around 20 amps. So not something you could use for a heat strip. And that's actually one of the big mistakes is accidentally running a high, too high a current through these contacts and then melting and damaging. But this diagram makes it really easy. You can see between one and two, is normally closed, between one and three is normally open. Between four and five is normally closed, and between four and six is normally open. We tend to call these our common points, and we generally think in this direction, though you're gonna see that in the case of using this, or even the 9370, to connect with a blower interlock, we actually have to kind of think of it the opposite direction if we wanna keep it running in this same kind of left to right way that we're used to thinking of. We're actually gonna connect our L1 to three, our heat strips to two, and our blower to one one if we use this set of points or if we were using this set of contacts here. When I say points, points and contacts are kind of synonyms. If we were using this set of contacts here, we would feed L1 into six, connect on our heat strip side to five for our interlock purposes only, and then our four to our blower. And again, we can't run a heat strip current through these relays because they're not rated for it. Same thing is true with this carrier uh, relay we've got here. You can see common, so that would be you know kind of equivalent to our point one on our 9340, and then we have our normally closed and our normally open contact. And so actually we're going to connect our common to our blower. And if you're used to these, you know that's what's connected there. Our normally open is going to be connected to our power supply, our L1 side, and then normally close is what's going to go to our heat strip interlock. And then we have our relays that we can use, relays contactors that we can use for powering the heat strips themselves because they have that rating. This is a sequencer, stack sequencer, which stages on and off. And the reason it does that is because rather than using a magnet, it uses a heater and it activates or deactivates little bimetallic discs in here. And so they always have a slight time delay to turn on and turn off. The time delay is greater on the top because it's further away from the heat source. So these little bimetallic discs actually snap open and closed based on that heat heat that's generated inside the sequencer. And then a contactor, this is just a, a very simple 40 amp contactor, which is another thing we can use um, for the purposes of heat strips. And in fact, is what's used on this set of Goodman heat strips that you see right here. But again, the goal in what I'm gonna show you today is how to ensure that when the heat strips come on, the blower comes on, but not vice versa. We don't want the heat strips to come on with the blower. The heat strip contactor or sequencer can handle blower amperage, but not the other way around. These little relays here cannot handle heat strip amperage, this one as well. So we have to make sure that we wire them, again, according to the, the manufacturers are gonna have wiring diagrams, but I see a lot of technicians when they go to uh, maybe use an aftermarket part, they make a mistake in this wiring. Look at these heat strips. You can see here, these are our power feeds that would come into our contactor, and then coming out of our contactor, that feeds our heat strips. Now this set of heat strips is a 7KW, so each one of these coils is three and a half kilowatts a piece. But let's talk about everything that you're seeing here, because sometimes it might look a little confusing. It's actually very simple. So what's happening is we're breaking both sides of power with this contactor. So each side of power is breaking one leg, one on the L1 side, and often that's where we think of going in because we read left to right, so we think of the left as going in, although on alternating current, it doesn't matter. And so let's imagine that this here is our L1 going in. It feeds in here, which these are our fusible links. So if those break because of high temperature, it will shut down the heat strips and those would have to actually be replaced. Comes out of that and goes into our heat strips, travels through our heat strips, comes out the other side, and then goes through our thermal limits. These are just snap action bimetallic discs. So if these overheat, these will shut off the heat strips, but they will reset. So these are resetting type. And then it comes back, goes to the L2 side, assuming this is the L2 side. Again, haven't looked at the diagram, but doesn't really matter. And then goes back to the power supply on the other side. So heat strips are very simple. They're resistive. Um, all we have to do is just provide L1 and L2 and make sure that they don't overheat, which that's a big part of making sure that blower comes on whenever they are on. So whenever we have that W call, which again, this is going to be our W call, so white 24 volts uh, to one side, back to common on the other. When we get that 24 volt call, these contacts pull in and that brings on your heat strips. So when we look at a relay, we tend to think from left to right because that's how it's drawn and that's how we read from left to right. So one, two, three, we have normally closed from here to here and normally open from here to here. And we would also tend to call this one terminal a common. That's just typically how we would think about it. It's the common point in between 
these two sets of contacts. But when we try to apply a relay, wiring it up in that way, it gets a little confusing. It's a mistake that we often make. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this real quick and fast forward, enjoy the music while I make this terrible drawing. All right, so we have 240 volts AC between L1 and L2. So we're gonna draw our loads in between. We're not gonna do the low voltage here because this is a high voltage interlock, not a low voltage interlock. So no matter why the heat strips are coming on, if they're coming on, because obviously for them to come on, they have to have high voltage applied all the way across on L1 and L2, we want it to bring on the blower. So I'm gonna write HC for heating contactor here. All right, so here's our blower, and this is our blower relay, so we'll just write uh, FR for fan relay, something like that. That's a common uh, nomenclature for that. So now if we give a G call, it closes the switch. So low voltage 24 volt G call energizes the coil of contactor, energizes the coil of the relay, shuts the relay contacts, brings on the blower. Heat relay closes both of these, brings on the heat strips. The problem is we've got no interlock. So we want this blower to come on when the heat strips are running. So what do we do? Well, first thing that guys will think is, well, this is simple. All we do is we just connect a wire from here to here. Obviously that's incorrect because what will happen is now anytime even the blower's on, it's gonna back feed and bring on the heat strip so that doesn't work. So next they pull out their relay and the relay's oriented like this. I'm gonna go ahead and redraw it here so it's a little bit easier. So the relay's oriented something like this where you have your common terminal, which on the 9340 is listed as number one. And then we have our, the number two is normally closed, point from number one. So we'll draw it here. So this is B terminal number two. And then we're gonna have a normally open switch here. And that would be terminal number three. And that works just fine because it closes the switch, brings on the blower, but still we've got no interlock. So where do we connect this number two terminal in order when we have it wired like this? in order to get this to work. Well, it doesn't matter where we connect it, it's not gonna work. If we connect this number two here, well, what's gonna happen? Heat strips are gonna run 24 hours because it's gonna feed through the relay. So not only is it gonna melt the relay and the relay wires because of the current that heat strips draw, which is higher current, generally about 20 amps, but it's also going to ruin the relay in the process and the heat strips are gonna run all the time and you're gonna have a high power bill. So this doesn't work. So where can we connect this normally closed relay in order to fix this? If we connect it out here, that does nothing for us. If we connect it on the other side of the heat strips, it's a dead short. No matter what we do, when we wire it in this way, it's a problem. And it's because we're looking at the relay right side up and we're looking at it from left to right, imagining that we have to hook common to L1 and we don't have to do that at all. All we gotta do is turn the relay upside down. So instead, we connect power to three we connect blower to what we would call common or one. That's our normally open contacts. And now what do we do? Well, now one is connected, normally closed, right? Now we can connect that terminal right here, number two. So that's how we connect that. Now, how does this work? Well because when the relay is energized, it opens the one that was normally closed and closes the one that was normally open. So when it's de-energized, what happens? If the blower relay isn't kicked in because we don't have a G call, high voltage heat strips come on, these close, we have current flowing through here. Well, now it has a path to the blower. It's gonna bring the blower on and that's gonna be carried by these heat strip contactors or sequencer or whatever you have that's actually rated for High, high enough amperage to do the job. So this is safe. If this blower relay kicks in, so if we get a G call, it's fine. Same thing will happen. This will now go from normally closed to normally open. So this is if it's energized, it'll switch positions. And now this will go closed. It'll bring the blower on, but it won't back feed the heat strips. It won't allow it to uh, work improperly. And so that's all just a function of taking this relay and turning it upside down and thinking of it differently and not just working from left to right. Once you start to think in that way, not just having to use it in the way that you're used to using it, now all of a sudden you can use that relay in the opposite way and connect the common side, what we call common or terminal one, to the load rather 
than the power supply and it gives us the ability to create this unique interlock. And that's pretty much the standard way that this has been done in air handlers and fan coils for essentially ever. It's the way that it's done in this carrier diagram that you see right here. If you, if you look, um, you'll notice that the common side of this relay in this diagram is connected to the blower, not to the power supply. The power supply is connected to the other side on the normally open contacts. So again, just to show it the way that it really is, clean this up a little bit, just so you leave me on a good screen and don't get confused. We're gonna connect the blower to our common terminal. We're going to connect from here to our normally closed contacts. Our normally closed contacts go on the load side of the uh, heat strip contactor or sequencer. And then we have our normally open contacts. So in the case of the carrier blower board, this would be common, normally open, normally closed. Just that simple. So hopefully that helps. And mostly what I'm wanting you to see is get a better sense of relays, how they work, diagrams, how they work, but also thinking outside the box and realizing everything doesn't always have to go from right to, right to left, even though relays are generally used where the power supply connects to the common or that one terminal on the left side. You don't have to necessarily use them that way. And in this case, you actually cannot use them that way. Thanks for watching.